Hello, YouTube. Thanks for joining the G-Man 5338 for our 50 subscriber special. That's right. As promised, there are a few things I need to go over before we get into the story. Number one, as usual with most of my stories, there are things which I cannot tell you. I have to edit the information in some ways. But I will do so in a manner that will not ruin the story for you. Hopefully. Number two. Canada lost 159 of our brothers and sisters to the fighting in Afghanistan. Among those casualties was Colonel Jeff Parker of the Royal Canadian Regiment. This trilogy, the series, the story is dedicated to his memory, it's dedicated to his family, and to all his close comrades. Now I want you all to take a moment to reflect on all those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. Now, it is time, ladies and gentlemen. Grab your drink, grab some popcorn, won't you come on down to my pleasure emporium where I will begin the tale of the dragon. Hey, and thanks for sticking with the G-Man 5338 for our 50 subscriber special. Now, I got on my black water hat again because it is time to tell the tale of the dragon. Why am I telling the tale of the dragon? Because we hit 50 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen. Now we gotta push on for 100. We're at 51 right now. Let's get to 100, yo. Otherwise you're gonna be stuck with 33% of a G-Man story. But today I will set the stage. The story goes back to 2010. In the late winter, in early springtime, and it will carry us all the way into the fall. However, for part one, we will only be dealing with the end of the winter and the springtime in Kabul, Afghanistan. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. I was a member of a small team of soldiers in Kabul. Uh, we didn't quite belong to the battle group of Canadians in Afghanistan. Um, we, we existed in somewhat of a gray world, okay? Uh, what had happened was uh, one member of the team had to be reassigned uh, back into Canada and they needed to replace that person. However, this unit is all voluntary. You volunteer for this stuff. And old G-Man, being the type of soldier he was, well, he put his hand up. Folks, only one other person in Canada volunteered for this job. One. But I won the competition. So, after some training, I found myself with my boots back on the ground in Afghanistan, again, as a member of this team. Now, we all had primary duties, but we also had secondary duties. And among those secondary duties, one of us had to look after a school of blind children on the far south end of Kabul. Now, the member of my team who had been doing this before I arrived had been doing a pretty bang up job. He ended up building a kitchen so that the kids at the school could have food, so that they could cook hot food for their lunches. So what did that mean for the old G-Man? Well, when G-Man took over, because it became his secondary duty when he arrived in Afghanistan, G-Man had no money left to look after these kids. And there were problems, ladies and gentlemen. 
So, right now, I'm going to take you to the Kabul Vocational Blind School. Let us go. Now, the school was located on the south end of Kabul on a road called Darulaman. All right. This is a target-rich environment. There are all kinds of government buildings, agencies, education buildings, hospitals, okay, along this road. One of Canada's first casualties in the war in Afghanistan, Jamie Murphy, died on this road. So, I had no money to look after these kids at the school. There were like hundreds of them. Boys and girls, young to teenagers. All blind in one way or the other. To one varying degree or another. Their teachers were blind. They didn't get much help. They were sponsored by the Afghan government and the Italian government, but they weren't getting much help. So, G-Man had a problem on his hands. I could either not really do a whole lot, or I could make things right at the school. So what would happen when I would get a day off, if you could call it that, is I would end my night shift in the morning, I would get a driver, a vehicle, and if I was lucky, I could get another gun, meaning somebody else to ride with me who could, who could shoot. All right. Sometimes I could get somebody else from my team to go with me. Sometimes I couldn't. Uh, I worked very closely with uh, some private military contractors. They were British, uh, and they were some pretty, pretty hard hitters. Uh, one of them was XASAS, and uh, he had taught Bear Grylls. I don't know if you all know Bear, who Bear Grylls is, but he was with Bear Grylls in the SAS, and he was his instructor. There was another gentleman. Uh, he was British Airborne. He was a sergeant major with them, but they had long since left the military, and they were working on the private side. Sometimes, if I was lucky, I could get one of them to roll with me. Other times, old G-Man just went out by himself. But in any event, I would get from where I lived in the Wazir Akbar Khan, which is in the northern part of Kabul, I would travel what should be 15 minutes, but at times it took three hours because they have no traffic lights. Nobody follows the rules on the road there. I spent three hours sitting in traffic one day. I watched a one-legged man try to push a taxi cab up the side of a mountain. Crazy day, folks. Anyways, so I would go down to the school. I had to start making assessments. What needed to get done? And everything, ladies and gentlemen, needed to be done. Except for the new kitchen. The bathroom was disgusting. It was like an open septic tank. They had one source of fresh water. It was a hand pump out in the middle of a field. They had no paper for their braille printers. Some of them were broken. None of the kids had canes. Their buses were all broke down. They were a hurting unit, ladies and gentlemen. But as I have said, Old G-Man looks after his people. But how is G-Man going to do that? It was hard enough to keep a stock of toothpaste, deodorant, and cigarettes, ladies and gentlemen. Let alone look after hundreds of blind kids. But old G-Man had a plan. Outside the box, ladies and gentlemen. What does G-Man do? G-Man reaches out to some very famous Canadians. That's right. I contacted Blue Rodeo, Billy Talent, Metric, Diana Crawl, who in turn contacted Nora Jones for me. Now I had 
come up with a plan that I would get these famous people to hopefully send me some autograph stuff so that I could auction it off at the Embassy of Canada in Afghanistan so I could raise some money because I had a lot of work to do, ladies and gentlemen. So that is what I did. I reached out and I contacted these people. Now, I also had people back in Canada contacting me. I had a blind downhill skier and comedian, a very funny dude by the name of Ken LaRoche, who had been working with an elementary school back in Ontario. And they were putting together all kinds of stuff for this school in Afghanistan. They had all these canes, uh, enough canes for all the kids. There was braille paper, books, you name it. And they had gone out and collected it for these kids on the other part of, on the other side of the world. Never met them, don't know them. But they were working their little butts off to help these people they had never met. And G-Man wasn't going to let that kind of effort go to waste. G-Man promised these people he would get their stuff to Afghanistan. No easy feat, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I was making at least one trip a week down to the blind school to meet with them, to let them know that I cared, at least just to sit down and have lunch and talk with them as I was formulating my plan and trying to get things to come together. And like I said, this was no safe part of Kabul or Afghanistan. On one particular trip where I was assessing the outside of the building, of this school, a few hundred meters away to the west, shit went up. There was explosions, gunfire. Ladies and gentlemen, it was heating up. Now, my first instinct was to stay at the school to protect the kids if the fighting made it that way. But other assets in Kabul that I needed to look after. And it was hard, but myself and the Brit who was with me and our driver, we had to leave. And our driver was like, ah, we'll be okay. We're doing God's work. Inshallah. God willing, we will be okay. We made it home. And there were no casualties at the school, the fighting didn't, didn't stray from where it had first started. My peeps were safe. But in mid-May, as things were starting to come together in old G-Man's plan, on the morning, the, I believe it was the 18th of May, I was due to be making a trip to the blind school on Darulaman Road. On that morning, Colonel Jeff Parker, 2nd Battalion, Royal Canadian Regiment, will be traveling along the same road. And supposed to be in the same area as old G-Man. And that is where this story ends for the day. If you want to hear more, you know what you got to do, folks. Show the love. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you're thinking of my content. I didn't think I'd get this video out until Monday. But... I figured you folks worked hard to get to 50. I will work hard for you. So happy Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. I hope your weekend has been good. I hope you're good. I hope you're safe and well. And I hope to see you tomorrow for Mental Health Mondays with the G-Man 5338. Peace.